So, um, I believe that Judge Grierson is here after his narrow victory in the um, retention. <laughs> uh, so, we're back live. Congratulations on your um, retention. You deserve it. Thank you very much, Senator. It's, it's good to be back. Let's put it that way. It's actually a very strong vote. Was and thank thank you for all of you for your support. Um, thank you. So, um, are we ready to go ahead then, Senator, on H nine one ninety five? Yes. Okay. Uh, for the record, uh, Brian Grierson, Chief Superior Judge. Thank the chair and the committee for inviting uh, the judiciary to testify on H one ninety five. My testimony will be very brief because it. Uh, from our perspective, it's a, certainly a policy decision on the part of the uh, um, legislature um, and the court judiciary does not take a position um, on the bill itself, uh, only to say that if it is passed, it, I don't, do not see any impact uh, on the judiciary or on operations uh, on the judiciary. Um, and that's really all I have to say on this particular bill. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions of Judge Grierson? Senator Nitka. So, uh, so Judge Grierson, um, I had asked Commander Prouty about this and he explained it, but I'm just wondering still, with regard to a, a confidential piece of evidence, I didn't know those existed before, but um, in terms of the court, if it has materials, I, what um, Commander Raymond said, I believe, if I've got this right, that you know, they might show a video that includes an image of a child and they would, after the trial was over, they would, you know, they wouldn't leave the image there. But you mentioned that the court has a, does the court have a, explain to me what the court might have with regard to keeping something that came into court confidentially confidential. How do, how do you protect that from, in say a criminal case from being seen later? Um, let me first uh, apologize for not being able to be present earlier, so I did not hear that testimony, and I'm not sure exactly what uh, type of evidence he's referring to, but uh, there are different ways that that's handled. Um, oftentimes, when someone is submitting uh, a potential exhibit that may have confidential um, or, or information that uh, is not going to be public, uh, that is brought to our attention, usually in the form of what we refer to as a motion uh, to seal, um, and so that the court is alerted in advance that there may be something within a uh, document or a proposed exhibit uh, that is confidential so that we can address that before we actually get into the process. Um, and then um, during the course of a, a trial or, or proceeding, it may be necessary that the uh, information be disclosed in that context, but then uh, it could remain uh, under seal. Um, if, it's, if it's evidence that's introduced in a trial, we do have to preserve the record. So it, it's there and uh, it could be remain um, under seal from the public, uh, but it would still be part of a, a court record if, if that answers your question. It, it does. And should it go on appeal to the Supreme Court, um, you know, obviously they, they could see it also. But I'm wondering, are those records also um, in perpetuity, sealed and protected? If, if something is maintained under seal, it would still be under seal or unconfidential within, within the file. In other words, think, think also, uh, for instance, um, of, of our new uh, case management system, juvenile records are all uh, confidential. So they remain, we maintain the records, but they are maintained as confidential, meaning access to those records is limited to whatever individuals, entities that are entitled to see them under the statutes. Um, so there, there is a means within our system to mark uh, documents as confidential, even within this new case <laughs> system. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of Judge Grierson? Thank you very much, Judge. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Before everybody um, leaves, I want to explain most of you are invited for the 1030 
on H-128. Most of you have already testified. My intent was to just have, after we hear from Representative Small, to just have a discussion of the bill and to uh, move forward with that. Um, so I, there may be some confusion. Uh, I know John Campbell said he's gonna be late, which is fine, um, but uh, it, it's, it was uh, inviting all of you for the markup period, not necessarily for the, um, more testimony, except for representatives. Hopefully, yes. Clearer? All right. Um, I'm, uh, I don't know what. <clears throat> Michelle, could you join us? I, I, while I was stepping away from my <clears throat> electronic media, I, I missed part of the conversation. Um, but are we square away with the use of the term electronic media rather than electronic devices? And I'm, I'm fine with uh, that. Commander Raymond was very helpful on that. Good. So uh, is there any reason not move forward with this today? I believe you heard from everybody who testified in the, in the other body, so. It truly is. <clears throat> I mean, it's rare that we have agreement from all sides, so I should probably take advantage of that. Are there any amendments that anybody has? I was very tempted to want to note down April 9th as the first time on my judicial committee career that there was actually a simple bill that turned out to be simple. But Philip had too many questions, so I'm not sure I can put it into that category. Well, <laughs> uh, I could mess it up by adding it to H18 instead in 103. But it really, I, I'm, you know, H18 is the same, same area. Anyway, um, but I think we'd better off not to mess it up. So I take that, Senator Benning, as a motion to report favorably H195 as it came to us. I didn't, there's no amendments, and we're just voting on the bill. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All right, hearing none. Peggy, would you please call the roll? Senator Benning. Yes. <clears throat> Senator Nicka. Yes. Senator White. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. So while we've got all these people in the room, it might be helpful to have a little bit of a discussion about H one O S one O three as it relates to um, H eighteen. Good Samaritan language. Yeah. <clears throat> Did Peggy, did we, we, next week we have markup of that bill, right? Uh, hold on, let me just look at the schedule. I'm pretty sure, uh, yes, we do. At 11, from 11.15 to 11.30 on Tuesday. Yeah, and that was just for markup, right? Uh, S18? S103. S103, H1, S103, no, H18, S103. Oh, okay, hold on, I was looking at the wrong one. Um, S, okay. We have S103 uh, testimony from 10, 10.15 to 11.15, and then we have markup 11.15 to 12. Uh, who do we have testimony from? David Chair, Chris Fenno, Sarah Robinson, and Matt Valerio. I don't remember why we have. Thought we already heard from everybody. I think that that's just on one o on the good Sam. Part. Oh, okay. I think, you, I think you've heard from everyone on H eighteen. Okay, so are we good with H eighteen? That's uh, your bill, right, Michelle? 
Yes. Uh, are you asking me if you're good? What? That's, are you asking me if you're good? <laughs> yeah, have we got any changes to H18? That's the bill that would... Um, right. That we, we don't have we, that on the agenda next week at all. The only, um, the only thing out, outstanding that I remember was there was some back and forth about I'm looking at it now. Um, C on page two, simulation applies to conduct, not to a simulated child. AG's office had said that they were okay with removing that, but the committee hadn't taken any position. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think I missed any dis later discussion on that, but. I think, the, I think the last bit was that to change that to so that C would say, 7C would say simulation applies to conduct only. And then not, and then strike the, the last clause. I see. You could just take it out if you wanted to as well. And I thought that the, the AG's office was going to check with their folks, but you know, mixing my bills. That, that was a question here too. I think someone else. Um, Here's what I have written down as the decision with regard to C. Leave the child definition as it is without the new words actual in front of it. That was a decision we made. I thought that was another piece. Um, too, too late, so, too late. so there was a there was a question over whether to add the word actual to child, and then there was a I thought a separate question about the phrase simulated child in C. Let's see, wait a minute, two, eight, two, one. And I would be, personally, I'm fine with either eliminating it or making the change that Michelle just suggested, changing it to only and getting rid of not to a simulated child. Two, eight, two, one. But maybe we should hear from David Scher again on that. Um, not David sure or Marshall, do you want to comment? Sure, I'm David Chair with the Attorney General's Office. I, I don't think we'd have any objection to any of the three options that are being discussed with that, either keeping it, eliminating it, or Michelle's um, uh, idea of only conduct and then eliminating everything after the comma. Um, I think we're okay with any of those. <clears throat> And just to be clear, we would still oppose this with any of those changes because we think that the bill needs to, at some point, say that it needs to be an actual child or a real child because that's the language that the courts use. So, Marshall? Yes. In, in other words, your, your objection is mm -hmm. to a different section regardless of what we do with C. It's the same issue because it's both different ways to capture the same concept, which is that this can't apply to simulated children. Um, and the way that we think that that's appropriately dealt with is the way that the courts have dealt with it, which is by saying that the victim has to be a real child or an actual child. Um, whereas the change to say conduct applies or simulation applies to conduct, not to child we think is not clear enough. And um, in such a serious <laughs> offense, it's important to be very clear and to have the language reflect the what the law is. So, um, you know, absent language that says actual child or real child, we're gonna continue to oppose it. Well, it's not settled. It's not. But we're going to have this argument no matter what. Um, it's an argument that. Um, that's that's why I wrote down what the decision that we seem to have come to, and underlined it in red. Yeah. So we already sort of. I, yeah. At least that was my take on it. That yeah. yeah. I, I, my my sense was that the the committee didn't want to go in the direction of saying actual child earlier on and then if you're not going to do that I don't think it makes sense to do the simulated child language in C so 
it seems like you either do both or neither. So that's, that's why I would get rid of not to a simulated child and just say applies to conduct only. Is that so the way you see it, Michelle? <clears throat> It, I don't. I mean, I see them as the same issue. And I think if you're not going to have actual child, um, I think it is good to have 7C in there. Uh, I think if your discomfort is saying not to a simulated child, I would take that out. But even though if you take out that last clause, 7C is just reiterating what you have earlier in the intro language in 7, which is that clear that it's just applying to conduct. But I think it is helpful. I don't think, um, I mean, certainly you have established in, in this body as well as the other body, a clear legislative record that is that it is no one's intent that this apply to a simulated child. So while the the there may if you choose not to include the word actual child in the definition, it's not going to. I don't think it's going to be particularly difficult for the court to ascertain that the intention was, you know, by the language that you have in there in seven saying that it only applies to conduct, plus the legislative record, plus all the previous cases and the common understanding that simulated children should not be a part of this. I don't think, I, I'm not concerned that the court's not gonna know what you're doing here, but I do think having a little something in seven C mm -hmm. belts and suspenders in terms of the language on the page when you open up the statute without knowing the context behind it. So mm -hmm. I would recommend that you do have a little something in 7C. That was the that was the way because there was a, a disagreement between the Defender General's Office and the Attorney General's Office about whether or not to include <coughs> the child in the definition. The inclusion of 7C was to try to strike a balance there to address the issue, but in a way that was palatable to the Attorney General's office and not changing the definition of child for that chapter. Um, so I think, do, do you have concerns with the language that I proposed about just kind of tweaking it and then just not amending the definition? Or you just feel like it's superfluous? I'm good with what you uh, no, propose. Yeah, I was. I was arguing in favor of what you okay. suggested. Yeah, so and I think not, it's fine there. I don't, I don't have the same concerns as the Defender General's Office. If you have that, and then you have the legislative record, and you have the other context, um, I think it's pretty clear in there that it's just applying to mm -hmm. context. And your language, Michelle, is what? I would just, if you look at, can, Alice, can you see? Um, yes. I have which it's mine. I can't yeah, see. It. So on 7C, as it passed from the House, it just says simulation applies to conduct, not to a simulated child. I would just change that to say simulation applies only to conduct, period. I see. And it's somewhat repetitive because if you look at the lead in on 7A, simulation means the explicit depiction of any conduct. You know, I think uh, I, I like see the way that it is there and as passed by the House, but I think you could strike that second clause in there if that's if that's your preference. Okay. Yeah, A says simulation means the explicit depiction of any conduct described in subsection 2A through F of this section. And then you would now have C reading, simulation applies only to conduct. Yeah. Right? Yep. And I um so that would be the change to make to H18. I'm still wrestling with it. <clears throat> what is the hesitancy in not using the term actual child? I think the disagreement was that it, it would present to a court as new language. Is that right, Michelle? I think there's a, there's a couple issues. One is that it's, it's changing the definition of child. We have a definition of child you know, throughout the statutes. And when you're amending the definition and then you have the same, I mean, you can obviously have this, the same word and it can mean different things in different chapters for, for purposes only of that chapter. Um, but there are, it, um, 
it does kind of beg the question of when it's different in one place, well, why is it? So if, it, if you're specifically saying in that definition, you know, that it means an actual child, then you have that term child elsewhere in the titles and it does, and you don't amend it to say actual child. Well, then does it beg the question in those other definitions? Is there something contemplated beyond an, an, an actual child? Do you know what I'm saying? So through, so it kind of calls those other definitions into question. And then um, again, it's a, it's a definition section that's applying to the whole chapter. And then the attorney general's office had a concern about having, I think an additional burden of proof there, but I would let uh, David make that argument because uh, it, I, it, I didn't share it, so <laughs> I, so. Um, but making it clear for legislative intent that we do not intend to loop in a simulated uh, depiction. You're comfortable if we struck seven C's last phrase that it would be consistent with current case law? Yeah, I think C the way it is, is the best approach. If you're not gonna amend it to say actual child and, um, and or, or say in somewhere at the, the term actual child, which is what the attorney general's office is trying to avoid. I think that 7C as what you have presented in, in the house pass version is the best way to go about it. But that was my initial reaction when you first read it to us. And I'm, uh, I'll disagree a little bit with Marshall here, but that's okay. Cause I think the intent we have been talking about is pretty clear on the record. But to strike that phrase seems to me to almost muddy up that intent to some. It would not be my preference. I'm trying to I'm trying to make everybody happy or at least everybody not unhappy. <laughs> well, I my my objection to I I don't put it this way. I don't object to having the phrase simulated child. I think in one way it makes what we're doing clearer. But what I said initially was then there should be a definition of simulated child. Is a simulated child a computer generated child or is a simulated child a living person who is role playing as a child? What, what does simulated child entail? So if we're gonna have the phrase simulated child, I think there needs to be a definition Seems to me if right. we don't want to do that and we want to take a more elegant approach, we can just get rid of that phrase in the way that Michelle suggests. I'm going to you know, ask us to take a look back at section one, 2821 definitions as used in this chapter, child means any person under 16 years of age. And you go back and you look at um, 7A, little i, involves a child as defined in subsection one of this section. Go back, subsection one, child means any person under 16 years of age. Then come down to um, C, and it says simulation applies only to conduct. Clearly, involving a child as defined in subsection one. Go back, child means any person under 16 years of age. Person, not simulated. And I agree with, with um, Philip that you adding in the words um, simulated child then kind of does good money. I don't know that it would. I don't disagree with Michelle, but you know. I think it's, it is somewhat clearer by taking out that phrase and doing um, so that 7C reads simulation applies only to conduct. Mm -hmm. You could add with a child, I guess I suppose, but, that, but we've already defined. Just looking up the plain meaning, the plain language definition for simulated, it means manufactured and imitation. Um, 
uh, imitating the conditions of something. Um, yeah, I just, I just think it's a larger, it's a larger field of reference. Um, we we already exclude up above drawings, um, paintings, drawings, non-visual written descriptions, but then when you talk about a, a simulated <clears throat> child, those those um, paintings, drawings non-visual or written descriptions might not capture other forms of computer simulation. Um, so I, 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 I guess my way of looking at it is with the time we have left and given what we're gonna need to do on the language that we're adding, um, this seems to me like not a big problem if we get rid of not to a simulated child with noting uh, Marshall Paul's objection, I guess what I was saying originally was either we trust the definition is clear that it's an actual child, you know, the, the definition of what, a, of what a child is at the top of the bill, and if we trust that, then we don't need that simulated child language later. Um, and so the reading that the chair just did from that definition forward, I think yeah. is pretty clear. Okay. I think we, any objection to doing that? To doing actually, no. doing what the, Michelle said? The, 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 change, the change C, the final C in yeah. section one, yeah. simulation applies only to conduct. Okay, I'm okay with that. So striking the words not to a simulated child. I'm okay with that. I think I'll live with I'm it. Okay with that. I'm going to say I live with it only because I think the record is pretty clear of what our intent is. All right. So that takes care of that. And then when we get to S103, um, we will hear some testimony next week, but I think we. <clears throat> yeah, we can finish that off. This has been helpful anyway. And we're going to take a break until 10.30. Wow. Is that okay? Have we, I, is there anything more? Oh, who's going to report F1, H195, the facial recognition? Don't all jump. <laughs> I, I will do it if... Uh... If no one else is, I guess you can announce it's a simple little bill. Yeah. So, so I, I think Senator Baruth, you just need to let Secretary Bloomer and Vanessa know the vote because they already have the, the bill. Okay. And I'll get you a witness list. And that was five zero zero. Yep. Did you get the uh, the other bill S ninety nine? I sent it on to Bloomer. All right. But I'm assuming it went to rules and I have to get it out of rules. Is that what the... I, you know, I, I always thought under the old system, I thought we could send ours out after crossover and then they went to jail in the house. No. I didn't think yeah. they had to be voted out on both sides. Is uh, that you're right. right. Yeah, you're, you're right. I don't right. understand why, because the the point of crossover is to give the other chamber the time to work on it. And if they, if it's something that they feel is important and they want to get, they'll they'll make that appeal to their rules committee. But we keep working on S bills all the time, and they yeah. might deal with them in January. Yeah, I don't. I think I, it. I think it got confused with under COVID at the beginning. Things had to be yeah. voted out. Yeah. And, and that was a new regime. So it, it's not clear what, why it would go to rules now unless it's the COVID piece. I, I might ask Becca about that because I'm, I'm concerned that it means that any S bills that we're uh, continuing to address that we would like 
maybe they want to take them up this year because they have time, or maybe they want to wait until January. But we we have every, uh, um, I think, right to get them out and keep working on them. So I'm I, I'm going to check with Becca on that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 